and he goes into the tornado and then he ejects. Hey, I'm Rob Scratch Mitchell, a third generation fighter pilot and director for aviation scenes. Watch Mojo asked me to use my expertise and break down popular flight scenes from film. Today, we're looking at superhero movies. All right, let's see what we've got up first. Ah oh, yes, X-Men 2. I remember this. So obviously, tornadoes are trouble in any airplane. Uh, even though fighter jets are really, really tough and built strong, uh, flying through a tornado would have been instant disaster. The G-forces alone probably would have 15, 20, 30 G. Uh, it's hard to even imagine the force. It might have ripped the airplane completely apart, the wings off. And so that would have been a little bit artificial that it flew through and went into somewhat of a slow spin as it came out of that tornado. That would have been trouble. And he goes into the tornado and then he ejects. If you're in the airplane, you're probably much safer than if you eject in a tornado. That would most certainly destroy you. And parachutes are not very tough, so I wouldn't want to be anywhere near those sort of winds in a parachute. Missile alert. And these missiles are flying that. Air-to-air -air missiles fly at extremely high velocity, three to four Mach. They're, they're traveling ground and just seconds are going thousands and thousands of feet. And that jet was just a few thousand feet behind the X-Men plane when it fired. Those missiles would have been there within a second or two. And so the way they play it out here for dramatic effect, which is fine, but in reality, those missiles would have hit that X-plane really quickly. Boom, it hits the X-plane of Blackford. Blows a hole into the canopy, or just behind the canopy, or the cockpit area, but they show the jet going into a bit of a spin. It didn't really affect anything aerodynamically on the airplane, so I doubt it would have lost control like that, but yeah, need to make these things a little bit dramatic, right? Oh, next up, Iron Man. Okay, good, because I'm staring at one right now and it's about to be blown to kingdom come. Ah, that's my engine. F-22 is one of my favorite fighter jets of all time. Oh, just looks supersonic. I, got I, I love this scene overall, but there's a, a little inaccuracy right now. So we hear one of the fighter pilots say and show us that he has a, a lock, meaning a radar lock, and then he fires his missile. And then, which is really cool, Iron Man says he's launching flares, which is cool because that's a countermeasure against missiles, but flares are used to countermeasure against uh, heat-seeking missiles, when in this case, they've actually used a radar missile. So what, uh, what Iron Man needed here is he actually needed what's called chaff, which are small metal filings, and thousands upon thousands of them are released, and it creates a false radar signature that confuses a radar missile. So Iron Man needed chaff, not flares at this point. But love the flight modeling that they've done with the uh, the jets here. Some really good, good CGI work. Great sense of flight dynamic and energy. Going to guns. Too close for missiles. Going to guns. Re-engage. Execute evasive maneuver. Keep going. Iron Man saves the day. He's a good guy after all. Oh, and here we have Vulture and Spider-Man going at it. Awesome flying rig that Vulture has. I'd like to have something like that myself. So I really like this retro reflective panel business. They, uh, they've taken some, you know, inspiration from nature and how uh, octopus perhaps blend into their environment but they did a cool job with this kind of nice touch yeah i like the way they did have done the aerodynamics of this it would have been even for spider-man it would have been tough to hang on at four or five hundred kilometers an hour Flying back in the engines. Things going in engines is never good, and and certainly, with 
with Vulture's wing part going into there, it would have destroyed that engine, but it probably wouldn't have popped out like this, like a, a cork in a, in a bottle. They would have exploded if uh, that much damage had occurred. Oh my God. So Spider-Man sees this crippled craft going towards the city and he does something cool here. So Spider-Man clearly knows something about aerodynamics. Well, Spider-Man has the wherewithal that he knows that he needs to change something on the wings to turn the airplane. He's trying to steer it away from the city. He actually shoots his web to the flaps and not the ailerons. The ailerons are more on the outside of the wings and those are the things that actually go up and down and turn the airplane. And in fact, he used the flaps and those are what are used just to go down and actually slow the airplane for takeoff or landing. So he's got the great idea, the right idea, but the wrong execution in this case. The mask of the moon. Bane. Get him on board, I'll call it in. Yes, the Dark Knight Rises, the plane hijacking scene is one of my favorite all times. A lot of practical flying in this and some cool effects and stunts. Just love the flying environment. They picked these hills over Scotland. It's just gorgeous. Beautiful light. First one to talk gets to stay on my aircraft. Who paid you? No, they're really shooting this airplane. This is a uh, this is an actual airplane flying scene. This is not CG here which I like, I respect practical flying in, in movies. That's of course what I do. So. so for the pilots watching this, they'll probably notice a couple things. If you look at this white airplane, the Hercules airplane, the flaps are down. Those are the, the flight controls at the back of the wing and they're lowered and those help the airplane fly slow. So what likely is going on here is that they're probably shooting this with a helicopter so these airplanes have to fly pretty slow. I dare say this Hercules, it's a pretty big airplane, pretty heavy airplane. It's probably at the low end of its flight regime. It's probably going as slow as it would like to go right now. So we've got these four dopes on a rope jumping out of the back no of the airplane. Survivors. The Hercules airplane, the pilots are flying way up front and they can't see down and aft. They might have some communications with what's called a loadmaster who might be looking at the back of the ramp, but steering these dangling dopes on the rope would have been very, very difficult. And uh, to fly them towards the actual CIA airplane would be immeasurably difficult. You know, I love this scene where the wings tear off as this Hercules airplane pulls a CIA airplane out of its normal flight regime. Well, in truth, at those speeds that they're trying to suggest the airplane wings would have tore off, uh, it's unlikely. In fact, if anything, the force of that airplane being captured, if in fact they could hold that CIA airplane with, the, with those bolts, uh, might have caused very difficult flight control for the Hercules airplane. The engines were running on the airplane, it would have been pushing that Hercules airplane down, it would have been very difficult to control. We had so much force to tear off the wings, but somehow those four guys were able to hold on to this slippery fuselage, so a little inaccuracy there. But there again, the filmmaker in me just loves it. Looks cool, right? Calm down, Doctor. Now is not the time for fear. That comes later. Super cool effect, dropping it away like with those explosive bolts. And uh, so that technology exists to do that. But again, you know, a little bit artificial being able to hang like there. But now they have their final dilemma. How do they get these back guys back on the airplane? That's a tough fish to reel in. One thing that people don't realize about airplanes is that the skins of these airplanes are actually quite thin and fragile. So even though Superman has great strength and can lift things, he, in this scene, he's shown pushing against the top of the airplane to push the shuttle off. If he had to exert that much force, he likely would have pushed right through the top of that airplane through that thin skin. So a little artificial there in that regard. 
But Superman does something cool here. It's in a left spin, but he goes to the right wing and he starts to pull on the right wing. This actually makes a lot of sense, so Superman knows how airplanes work. He's not just a guy that flies around. Almost has the spin stop now, but whoop, tears the wing off. That might have been a bit harsh. Those wings are so strong. The struts on airplane wings, I think he would have been able to keep pulling on that and get it out of the stall. But hey, it's awesome in, in the movie, right? For dramatic effect. And then here we go, another wing, which I kind of like because there's a lot of fuel in these wings and he flies through it and it explodes with all the heat and kinetic energy of him going through it. I buy that there was an explosion there, so I kind of like that. It's coming down, it looks like it's about a thousand feet away. This airplane's coming down at probably 500, maybe 600 miles per hour. Tremendous speed, tremendous kinetic energy coming towards the earth. And Superman has to push this airplane and stop it. This is an interesting part of the scene. And in one hand, I really like what they did where they show the, the nose of the airplane collapsing a little bit as he pushes against it. And then that ripple effect as the skin sort of ripples towards Superman as he stops the airplane. In truth, and as we know, the skin of these airplanes is actually quite thin, including the nose. So as Superman would have pushed there with an airplane that's going maybe 600 miles per hour with that much kinetic energy, he would have likely pushed right through the nose, right into the cockpit, maybe even right through the airplane to stop it like that. So a little bit artificial. And I've actually had an incident where I hit a bunch of ducks and those, air, those ducks went through the airplane skin like cannonballs at the speed I was going. And it wasn't even going as fast as this airplane would have been going in its dive here. So it's kind of cool points that they thought about the fact that it crushed, but in truth, he probably went right through the airplane to stop it. Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.